The last two centuries have witnessed unimaginable change at a global scale. Geopolitically, through unprecedented historical change and a global leadership role in the development and application of new technologies, a federation of breakaway British colonies, the United States of America, has assumed global hegemony. Meanwhile, individuals and nations with undemocratic regimes are vying for the top spot in the global pecking order, using their respective strengths to do so, be it vast energy reserves or rapidly improving labor productivity, by exhibiting aggression towards its neighbors and beyond. One example is Russia's aggression in Europe, which is financed in large part by her ability to export oil and gas. In addition to geopolitical considerations, two centuries of rapid industrialization, global population growth, and the discovery and drawdown of oil and coal reserves have catalyzed a process of global climate change due to the man-made increase in the temperature of the planet's atmosphere. Halting and potentially reversing this development will require dramatic changes in society's use of energy and technologies. In short, both geopolitics and climate change are heavily connected to the world economy's reliance on fossil fuels. Now, let's go back to 1856. Peter von Rittinger, an Austrian mining and mineral regulator, invented the heat pump to facilitate the extraction of salt by evaporating water from salt brine. His same basic scientific understanding of the latent heat capacity in water, air, and even the ground is what today is driving modern heat pump technology. Heat pumps are pretty simple, in fact. They utilize a refrigerant to absorb and circulate heat, a compressor to move the refrigerant within the system, and two valves. That's it. And stay with me here, this sounds absolutely like magic, but using this relatively simple set of equipment, it's possible to move heat from one place to another. Depending on which way you move the air, the heat pump then heats or cools the space. For most of us, heating and cooling our homes is as simple as setting the thermostat. We don't often think about how this is done, but it turns out that this technology residing behind the thermostat is profoundly connected to our built environment, how the economy functions, and yes, even geopolitical ramifications. As we fast forward through the history of the heat pump from 1856, it really experienced a resurgence after the 1970s oil crises, when the globe was hit by a dramatic supply side shock in the delivery of energy. In short, the price of oil increased significantly within a short time period, and in return, societies and technologies were adapted. For example, you'll find lower ceilings, smaller homes, and compact cars as the technological response to this development. And one of those technological changes was to leverage the efficiency of the heat pump at large scale. Sweden, for example, has almost replaced all reliance on oil-based heating with heat pumps at the national scale. Similar trajectories were true in Finland, Estonia, and in Japan, where 90% of Japanese households use heat pump air conditioners. As a result, Japan witnessed a 40% drop in seasonal electricity consumption for heating and cooling over 10 years. But heat pumps still haven't found success in many parts of the world. The US, for example, had several starts and stops with the technology, and in line with oil prices returning to lower levels and the discovery of vast gas reserves in America, the competitiveness of heat pumps waned. However, billions of dollars annually are invested in research and development to make heat pumps better, faster, and cheaper. Many entities, including the U.S. Department of Energy, the European Commission, National Government Research Institutes, nonprofits such as the International Energy Agency, the Rocky Mountain Institute, and the International Institute of Refrigeration are all conducting this research. Even Samsung, Carrier Corporation, and LG, all of whom make traditional air conditioning products, are conducting this research with the aim of improving the technology. As a result, the cost efficiency of the components, refrigerants, compressors, and valves, have seen great improvements and are now much more effective with additional incremental improvements expected in coming years. In addition, electricity generation is undergoing its own dramatic change. Renewable energy sources are dropping rapidly in price, and many consider the burning of decomposed, pressurized plants and animals for energy as old technology. So let's go back to the beginning of this story. Remember, we framed two major issues. Geopolitical aspirations tied to fossil fuels, with Russia being a currently aggressive actor, and global climate change tied to the same reason of burning oil and gas. Well, global cooling and heating energy consumption comprises 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions, and heat pump technology has the short-term promise of being able to eliminate 85% of those emissions. In short, there is no likely way for the world to achieve net zero carbon emissions without addressing heating and cooling. And at the same time, Heat pumps are a relatively mature technology with almost 50 years of national scale implementation and with large industrial companies with established manufacturing facilities in the industry. Could reducing emissions by simply substituting for heat pumps be easy? Well, no, probably not.
There are large social and cultural obstacles to adoption. Although some have made the change, only few countries have made wholesale swaps to heat pumps. Although much less true than in the past, previous starts and stops have given the technology a reputation for being less reliable on other forms of heating and cooling. In addition, there are global powers that rely on the extraction and sale of fossil fuels who are unlikely to simply allow for substitution and will fight a wholesale change for as long as it takes. Finally, the adoption of heat pumps is often tied to the public's perception of renewable energy and the belief in man-made climate change, and are considered somehow as less reliable or important. So, will this be a technology of the future, or will heat pumps yet again lose the battle for adoption? Will Russian and Middle Eastern oil and gas be replaced, shifting the global power dynamics beyond belief? If so, what will the ripples be throughout the globe? Where do you stand? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.